coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. We're hanging with the good guys. That means creativity. The dash is made out of one of the front fenders. It means vision. What if Chrysler had built a two-seat sports car to compete against Corvette and the Thunderbird back in the late 50s? It means taking a few chances. I was afraid it looked like Fido's butt when I got it done, <laughs> but everybody said it did. Plus, we need some rotors, some pads, and everything is just blah. Upgrading your brakes in more ways than one in Under the Hood. What a valiant effort this project had to be. My dad, he always had something odd, strange, and I guess I inherited it. Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a power-packed edition of Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps. The Good Guys Rod and Custom Association puts on fabulous hot rod shows all across the United States of America. Over 20 shows each and every year. But the big one, year in, year out, is in Columbus, Ohio. We are at the Ohio State Fairgrounds, the Ohio Expo Center, for the 14th PPG Good Guys Nationals. You will see way too much creativity thrown into these cars and plenty of horsepower. Russell, when I look at the bullet nose, I know it's a Studebaker. When I look on the dash and I see Studebaker and Champion, I know it's a Studebaker. Other than that, I have no clue. What did you do to this poor Studebaker? Took it home and I made the four door, totally chopped it up. I know. So I got a design I like. Throwed the parts together, a little beer involved, and uh, <laughs> endless hours. Now, how long has this car been in the family? This car's been my dad's when he first owned it. It was real nice shape. And then he sold it to an old guy that kept it. Didn't do nothing with it. So your, dad was I, the, your dad was the original owner yeah, of this absolutely. Studebaker? Then he ended up selling it to this old boy who was going to drive it and never did. He dies and I buy it at his farm sale. Went downhill big time 20 years later. And how long ago was this? I built the car about four years ago. It was black and it had a hard top on it. Got bored with it about two years ago and I cut a roof off of it and changed colors and redesigned it again. There's not a whole lot of car left no. if, if you want to do it again because well, you've chopped it twice already. It might be a woody wagon next year. <laughs> now, what are these doors? That is the rear door off the four-door Studebaker brought forward. So that was the yeah. back door? The front door was about six feet long and I just oh, throwed it aside and made the car fit the rest of the car. I love Buick portholes because my dad always had a lot of Buicks around. Yeah. I just did that to let the air out of the hood a little better. And uh, basically everything is Studebaker body-wise. The dash is made out of one of the front fenders. The pointed part off the front fender with the headlight bezel. I put the gauges in it. And the rest of the fender, I made the bottom half of my hood. It's all chopped down, stretched out. And then the back ends narrowed in as far as you could get it, did away with the lip that you could see the tire. Yeah. It's all shrunk in over two and a half foot every direction. Russell, that's pretty creative. And then the frame is all, all made all the way through the car to fit it. The front windshield, it's been narrow. I bet it's a foot at least shorter and it used to be two and a half feet wider. <laughs> and I got a convertible top at home I'm putting on it, I'm making and just never quit chopping on it. That's awesome. And then the back bumper's all made in on the body and narrowed the trunk super big to get it in. It's very cool. Well done. Thank I'll, you. I'll bet your dad would like it as well. Oh yeah, he'd roll over in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he has many yeah. times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Charlie Rancheros are cool enough as they are, in my estimation. You've made yours an awful lot cooler with some pretty interesting work. What went into this project? Um, it was just an old stock ranchero I'd had a long time. It was rusty and original and uh, about two and a half years ago I decided to fix it up and cut all the front end off and got rid of that uh, suspension and put a GM front clip on it and a L LT1 motor and a six speed and chopped the top. It was red and white and I painted it all black and uh, I changed this to uh, dull aluminum, I like that better than the gold, and uh, put 52 Mercury headlights in it. I put the 
Fairlane 500 trim on it. You have to cut the gutter off to do that and uh, chopped it two and a half inches and uh, I chopped the front bumper guards two and a half inches. And now what inspired you after owning this thing for what, 15 years? I didn't use it much. I just had it. I bought it that long ago when it didn't run too good and I don't know, it's round stuff to do. thought I'd fix it up and I had an extra motor laying around. So. What did you think it might look like? I was afraid it looked like Fido's butt when I got it done, <laughs> but everybody said it didn't. <laughs> and uh, I replaced about everything from the door handles down. It was all rusty. And I don't know, everybody seems to like it. So Anything fancy inside? Uh, nice dash? I padded the dash and I moved the radio a little bit and made a new insert for the uh, gauges. And uh, that's actually a 52 Mercury seat. I didn't have the right seat. I cut that down and put the put the old uh, Ford skirts on it and uh, I, the steering wheel is the original steering wheel and I put it on a GM column. I I like the steering wheel but I need a tilt column so I made an adapter and put it on the on the uh, Chevrolet column. And no need for door handles, she got rid of those. Shaved the door handles, yeah. I had a friend of mine make the uh, little wood slats for yeah. the bed. Um, the only thing I can make out of wood sawdust. <laughs> you did a nice job on that. So. You gonna do anything with it in the future? Or just go out, ride it, enjoy it, and talk just, about it? I'm gonna wear it out, I hope. If memory serves, 59 Imperials are usually a lot bigger than this. Right, we did actually narrow the car eight inches as well as shortening it a total of 52 inches. Oh boy, it's next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. World-class collector vehicles. That's what RK Motors Charlotte is all about. The finest in classic, muscle, and high-performance automobiles. The design and excellence of the 1930s and 40s. The chrome of the 1950s. The muscle of the 1960s and 70s, and much more. RK Motors is the one-stop shop to sell your car, add a new prize to your collection, or restore an old friend to past glory. Learn more about RK Motors Charlotte at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Vicki and Barry, you see a lot of very cool hot rods here today. I haven't seen another Plymouth Valiant hot rodded out, let alone a Plymouth Valiant panel truck. Congratulations, I think. Thank you. And it's a brand new, brand new job. What'd you Fin do, Barry? Finished the three, uh, three days ago. Wow. So we kind of restored it from ground up and had the car since 69 and drove it through high school. We dated in it, then the car set, and then we started back on it once we got the kids gone and done that. Started in 2007 and it's progressed that long to get to here. Vicki, did you really marry a guy who picked you up for a first date in a 62 Plymouth Valiant panel I truck? I sure did. <laughs> and, my, and when he came to the door, he had hair down about the middle ways of his back, and he had raggedy shorts on and a t-shirt, and my mom said, you be home at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> you were, but you were home at 10 o'clock for the next 30 some odd years, right? <laughs> uh, Barry, your dad had this car? Yes, he, he bought it from the guy's widow in 69. And he drove it uh, whenever he gave it to me in 73 for a Christmas present. And from there, like I said, we just went from there with it and drug it around everywhere you know, we moved to. And I just always liked something different. My dad, he always had something odd, strange, and I guess I inherited it. And I just, I've always liked it. Vicki, you have to buy into that because, you know, you're dragging a Valiant all around to your new homes. Absolutely. Well, we, I love cars just as much as he does, and I'm in the garage working with him. I mean, it's a family thing. Um, we just, we, it's a project that we've wanted to do, you know, our whole lives together. I mean, it's one of the things we checked off on our bucket list that we've done together. Now, it's called a panel truck. Yes. You don't expect to see that. Did it have glass in it at one point, or did it come out like this? It came out as a uh, station wagon. As a wagon and then Plymouth formed them to another company to do the conversion. And that's what they did. They done all the work on it, uh, leaded the door up in it, and, and, and went from there with it. 
And like I said, we ended up started to have a roof on and a front cow, and everything else is new, a rework and refab, and done that. The funnest part was finding the pieces, you know, that, and that to me that was the, the nicest thing about it. Just enjoy looking for something. You find something, say, man, look what I done found. You know, something you never, you know, would dream of getting. What'd you put under the hood, Barry? Put a uh, late model Hemi. I come out of a 2003 Dodge truck, and the truck was a total. I bought it. It had 2,900 miles on it, so it's it's actually a new engine. Still had to break in oil and, and the filter to come on. Well, my guess is your dad didn't think that the family would still have uh, this car after he bought it in '69, but I'll bet he'd like it. He, I imagine he would, but he's probably in his grave now turning over and saying, what did you do? You know, <laughs> but I, I think he would like it. I yeah. really do. Murray, of all the cars here that, that might catch your eye, yours immediately draws <laughs> the eye because uh, it's a one-of-a-kind deal. What basically inspired me to do this to an Imperial was uh, I knew of a 59 Imperial that was in a junkyard and I loved the Chryslers because they were so outrageous with their fins yep. and their trim and their chrome. And I was gonna go buy this car in a junkyard and build a rat rod. Well, long story short, I found a really nice car that was put away in 1972 with 50,000 miles on it. It's way too nice to cut up and make a rat rod. So I came up with plan B, which was this Imperial Speedster. It was a four-door car, and now it looks like some concept car that was drawn up in the 50s. We started with a 1959 four-door sedan, 19 feet long, huge car. <laughs> right, we did actually narrow the car eight inches, as well as shortening it a total of 52 inches. And if that wasn't enough, we cut the car horizontally and took out three inches of height to make a really nice little svelte two-seat speedster that was inspired by all the concept cars that Chrysler had built with the Italian styling house Ghia over in Italy. Now they built all these cars for the Motoramas and the auto shows and they teased the crowds with them, but they never brought one to production. So this is my answer to a question that was never asked. What if Chrysler had built a two-seat sports car to compete against Corvette and the Thunderbird back in the late 50s? It does. <laughs> it's really sharp. I, I, I love so many things about it, I can't even begin to, to say, Murray, uh, the windshield. Well, the windshield started as we took a fiberglass splash or a mold off of the original, one, original windshield, narrowed that eight inches, and then sent it off to a company in Bristol, Illinois, that molded this windscreen that's in the car. The interior that was taken straight out of a 1960 Imperial, narrowed of course, but put with all kind of sports car touches from the, the well bolstered seats to all the switch gear that runs down the center console, the waterfall that goes up between the seats, much like a new Corvette would have. Under hood we have a 6.1 SRT Hemi powering the car that's channeled through a 518 transmission and then out back is a brand new Dodge Viper independent rear suspension that really puts the power to the ground. This looks like something that you put on a trailer and never put on the road, Murray. Well, it's getting its first few miles on it this spring, but we thoroughly plan on driving it, so much to the point that yesterday we autocrossed it. I had it sideways at one point with a, oh no, look on my face. <laughs> Fortunately, the hat never came off. That was my speed, Governor. I knew if this came off, I was pushing it too hard. But we had the crowd going because they never expected me to drive it as hard as I did. Well, I must say, Murray, it's fabulous. You guys did a terrific job and you have a real prize. Thank you very much. It seems like the crowd here, from young to old, from male to female, everybody finds something in the car that they really enjoy, that strikes a chord with them, and that's just the best reward or award of all. You could just upgrade your brakes, or you could take a few extra steps along the way. It's just a little way to gussy it up and make it look a little nicer. Under the Hood is next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. RK Motors Charlotte wants your classic car. Let our consignment professionals take the aggravation out of the selling process for you. With an established international customer base, the RK Motors Charlotte consignment program has a 90% sell-through rate. Our top-notch marketing efforts have led to an average sale time of 87 days. We do the work. We do the marketing. We sell your classic for you at maximum value. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. 
Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. It's our favorite Camaro. It's back. Back on a rack and ready to go. We're with Mike Velick, the restoration manager here at RK Motors Charlotte. It's up on the rack. We're looking at a wheel, but we're looking inside. A little, a little brake upgrade today, Mike. Yeah, well, you know, the, the Camaro needed some brakes. And I figured, well, this is a perfect opportunity to show how far you can go in your garage with just a little bit of time, patience, and some simple upgrades that really dress things up. Playing NASCAR, Mike. <coughs> Absolutely. They're a little quicker than me, though. <coughs> okay, Jeff. We need some rotors, some pads, and everything is just blah. You know, this is what we're looking to fix here. All we're doing now is we're gonna remove the caliper to release the pads. The, the upgrade we're doing on here, I'm going with a drilled and slotted rotor. The drilled and slotted rotor, you know, people will give you your pros and your cons. In extreme driving, they do say that the holes drilled in a drilled rotor can start to crack. They overheat, but overall, cosmetically, it looks nice. And for your standard driving, it stops a little quicker. It's a little better, better performance upgrade. Pretty much standard setup on most disc brake cars. Um, real similar setup. There's usually two bolts holding your caliper on. And if you have to take, remove the brackets off that hold the caliper to, to the spindle, another two for that so real simple setup here we have your caliper bracket holds your bracket for your caliper and this bolts to your spindle and you know if you just want to do a quick brake change fine you could throw this back in I'm gonna have my lovely assistant Nancy come here and she's gonna take it for me and take it into the sandblaster. If we want to try this at home, does Nancy come over and bring the sandblasting equipment? Absolutely. Oh good, thanks Nancy. Actually, <laughs> you could take this on a wire wheel on a bench grinder. You could clean it up with a little roll lock disc. You know, your preference, but I have my assistant, so it works out perfect. Nice. Good luck Nancy, we're all counting on you. I don't know if we needed the big persuasion, but usually it just take a little tap. <laughs> Nothing too major. There it is and she come right off. Nice thing, we've got plastic inner liners, which, you know, keep you from having rust, but that's only half of the wheel well. You know, the other half's metal, so that's where the paint comes in. And all we're doing here, Jeff, it's just a little way to gussy it up and make it look a little nicer and protect your car at the same time. Just enough to clean it up. I'm going to take some brake parts cleaner and uh, we're going to spray down your caliper, getting some of the gunk off, all the built up brake dust. Brake parts cleaner pretty much evaporates very quickly, um, really cleans very efficiently. Your caliper over time, as the pads have worn in, the caliper starts moving forward. Okay. Well. Now you put those nice big fat pads in there and the nice thick rotor and you can't get them over. So what you end up having to do before you do anything, I usually take the old brake pad and a nice size C-clamp and all you have to do is put it in there and you spin that back to push the caliper pistons back so you have clearance. There's no seepage, there was nothing wet, so you know your brake lines are good. Look to see the condition of everything, does anything look rusted? Does anything look like it's on its way out? You know, and take the time to just do a nice visual inspection while it's all apart. It'll save you down the road. Will Mike Velick paint his caliper yellow, maybe blue, or perhaps red? Will Nancy return from the sandblaster with the caliper bracket in time? Or did she go to lunch, delaying Mike's project by hours? Will videographer Chris Madden trip, fall, and embarrass himself on television? Find out next week in the next exciting edition of Under the Hood.
Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Automotive passion runs deep at RK Motors Restoration. Our master body, paint, and mechanical technicians have decades of award-winning experience restoring some of the world's finest collector cars. Flawless paint and bodywork, highly accurate interiors, engines that run better than new. Each restoration is completely documented and finished to award-winning Concours quality specifications. From project car to automotive perfection, visit rkmotorscharlotte.com to make it happen. Now back to the Good Guys Nationals in Columbus on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Bob, if there's anything more fun than a classic car, it's a classic car that made your wife mad from the very beginning. That is right. Congratulations. How did it happen? Uh, well, it happened uh, five years ago on Father's Day. I got up and left the house from Kalamazoo, Michigan at 6 o'clock in the morning and figured I had until midnight that night before she could rightfully get mad at me. And <laughs> I, I drove down to a little town called Abingdon, Virginia, spent the night in a hotel and got up Monday morning, met uh, the guys that uh, owned this car, bought it, put it on a trailer and hauled it home. And needless to say, was uh, not spoken to for the next couple of days. <laughs> she had no idea you were going? She had no idea what I was doing until later that day when we communicated via cell phone and then uh, that's, that's when the fun began. And her immediate reaction was what? Uh, it can't be set on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, a family show. That's, that's right. That's very, that's very true. Why a 60 Chevy Impala? Well, because I like the car, number one. It's um, the, the style, the car itself is, is a car that I really like. but. Her dad uh, had, had purchased a 1959 uh, Ford that was just near and dear to him and we were starting to get together and go to uh, cruise-ins and car shows and I wanted to do something where I could hang out with him more. So I found this car online, called the guy who owned it and made arrangements to go down and buy it, not thinking, which is what we husbands do sometimes, not thinking that it would upset my wife as much as it did. But if I had told her and asked for permission, I probably would have gotten a lot more discussion than what I wanted. Well, <laughs> so, There's the line of the day, Bob. <laughs> yeah. So it actually upset her dad as well. Now her dad uh, was battling cancer at the time and you know we were just spending a lot of time together and he said to me, well I was kind of hoping you and I would spend you know the time together going to shows and I told him the reason I bought this car was to guarantee that I spent more time with you going to shows and we didn't miss a car show or cruise in or anything. So needless to say, I knew, I knew I could get over my wife being mad at me by the amount of time I spent with her dad. But it was definitely, it was worth the, uh, it was worth the butt chewing I got. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Too bad it's not red inside, Bob. Yeah. Uh, take a closer look. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but my retina is caught on fire. Yeah. Yeah. The, the car was done right. It's uh very, very nice car. The, the interior really stands out and that's when most people come up and look at the car and they go, wow. And then when they look at the interior, they go, wow. So it's, it was done right. Well, it's a great design. It's, it's held up so beautifully over the years and I'm glad things are okay with the wife again. 26 years of wedded bliss, one really bad day. <laughs> it always amazes me, the creativity that goes into building these customs and these hot rods. And if you want to see them, the best you'll see anywhere in the United States, go to any Good Guys show. An absolute blast today here in Columbus at the Good Guys Nationals. I'm Jeff Phelps. We'll see you next time on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte.